Okay. So I'm going to introduce to you interactivity in InDesign. And I downloaded something, but so I'm going to take you back to the class to introduce where you can locate it. Here we are. All right. So this assignment that you're going to be working on is called interactivity, and it's called multi-state and buttons exercise. And the instructions, of course, are on the link. And I think, if I remember correctly, when I built this file, what you're doing is I supply you with the artwork in the file like I've done in the past. And you're going to create buttons and something called a multi-state object. And it's very simple. The buttons exist. There's next image and previous image. And if I go to next image, I can go through essentially a slideshow by clicking the buttons of Alexander Calder's artwork. Okay? Um, and right here, um, underline, <coughs> excuse me, are um, four tutorials which will get you through this exercise. And um, again, let me come back here to our home page. I want to show you, I'm sure you've all been here by now, but this little eye on the home page takes you to the conversations we've had about the portfolio page. And there's two links. You can certainly read through all of this because it tells you what's expected of the portfolio. Um, there have been printed portfolios in the past before interactivity. You could look at that down in the bottom here, click on printed. I also want you to take note here on the bottom left how you're graded on your portfolio because it's different than all your other assignments. Um, again, it talks about um, how you organize your content, how you compel somebody to want to move through your portfolio, that you have a consistent design theme that's certainly authentic to you. Um, remember, it's a reflection of you like we discussed <coughs> earlier. And you do need a continuity of layout. doesn't mean that every page of your portfolio or every click of your portfolio needs to be the same. You'll see that some of them that I actually find more exciting and interesting vary because we're going to get bored if it's the same. Um, and then also, again, it has to be back to the whole core of the class. It's got to be authentic to you. What's your message? What are you trying to communicate? If it's your portfolio, who are you trying to grab? Who's your audience? You know, if um, <laughs> if you're if you're Teresa, Teresa, and um, you want to get a job in in Betty Crocker's kitchens, you know your portfolio is going to appeal to them. If you want to get a job with Martha Stewart because you want to look like Happy Homemaker, you make a portfolio authentic because that's kind of the body of work you've done through the class is the food and and cooking and home. If you're looking to um, become a 1950s architectural um, furniture designer, um, right? Or fabrics or patterns or motifs, consider who you're showing your portfolio to and how you want to position yourself. That's really something to be very thoughtful about. If you're taking this class because it's just fun, which it is, right? Um, yeah, if you're taking it because it's just fun and you're here um, as an international student and this class is all about your travels learning new things and it's not about graphic design, then have an airplane fly from <coughs> another part of the world over to the United States as you reveal what it is you've learned. You decide. You decide what makes it authentic to you. Um, okay, let me close this up. So, and then again, here, if back to the portfolio page, if you click here, here are all the video tutorials which will reveal everything you need to know on how to make your interactive portfolio. Every exercise you are not introduced to. I don't give you an exercise for each of these, in other words. So if you think, I want my portfolio to do something, if I want my portfolio, if I want to change how things reveal themselves, the timing of things that animate, you're going to have to come here and watch this little video yourself. So it's not all of your exercises won't get you there. They'll get you most of the way there. But this is your resource page 
like if you want to know how to put a video inside it, then how to place media. If you want to learn how to put music in it, how to place um, how to place media is where you come. So these are all of your resources, and you certainly don't underestimate Google. There is a lot more available now on Google than there was when this was first created, because it's become so much more popular. So um, Google your way through everything. And then, of course, we've already visited this. Look at other people's portfolios and see what appeals to you. You know, we talk about, um, for example, um, here's, here's a very straightforward portfolio. They had basically one, one background. Um, and there's, of course, buttons. So it reads kind of like a web page. And I rolled over accidentally and a door opened. So I was like, oh, OK, something fun happened. I want to go inside. And this is very straightforward because everything is happening up here for the portfolio. Um, and then here there's buttons for the different images I can click through. And then if I want to look at it closer, since it's just a little teaser, I could click the image it tells me to enlarge it. Now, now that I've enlarged it, how do I get out of here? Well, we're all pretty familiar with close buttons on the internet nowadays, so there's a close button. And so before I click on the close <coughs> button, understand this is an image and this is a button. And the button was told when I clicked on the previous image. When I clicked here, this image became a button. This is a button. If I click on the image, it's a button. And that happens. It animates by growing, zooming out. And I'm describing this to you so you can start to process it. It animated by zooming out. And then on this on this page in InDesign, this graphic sat there, and this little graphic, the X sat there, and it was designated as a button. And when I click on the button, the button is supposed to close the window. So go to a different page, which is back to here. Okay? So you have to start processing this, and it gets, it's a little confusing in the beginning, but you'll come to see it's really not as hard once you know what your intentions are. So um, I showed you this portfolio because it's very straightforward and it's very consistent, but nothing different happens in it. Where if you go to, for example, this portfolio, which actually isn't a complete portfolio, um, things happen without me doing anything. It doesn't have to say 110 Media Design because goodness knows if this is a portfolio as a showpiece for yourself, nobody cares what the class was you did it for. I don't need to see that. Um, it's really nice to have information about you. It's really nice to know how to get back to where I'm going, so always have a home button. Um, so I'm clicking on it. it. should take me home. There. Um, I don't, I have a bias against these things, by the way. When I go back home, I don't want to have to sit through the same animation I've already seen because I'll get bored if it happens every time. So consider making a different home page after you have your first introductory home page. Because waiting, I'm not a patient person. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like waiting on the internet. No, right. When that little thing says 10% spooled, 20% spooled, I'm like, are you joking? I'm out of here. So um, now notice what one of the things is it's fun to put your mouse over something and see like the lights of the buildings light up. That's an animation. Um, if I click on the portfolio, does the background stay the same? No, it changes. Then there's buttons here for going to different projects. And then there's a before, a next button, which is what you're going to learn how to do today, and a previous button. And here's a color poster project, and a next button, and a previous button. And the book lights up, so I kind of know that it's going to do something, right? So that became a button that I can roll over, and it shows me something else. Um, and then the close button. So that's kind of a, honestly, it's a neurotic portfolio because you didn't quite finish. But it does a lot of interesting things, which is why I'm showing it to you. So let me take you back here to the home page. So we can go to this assignment. Um, which is down here. Did I pass it? No. Which is interactivity multi-state. So you come to the assignment page and all of these will get you there, plus what I'm doing now. 
And then there's instructions as you scroll down here um, that talks you through it. This is a screen capture for your reference. So read the steps thoroughly. It's pretty clear. And ultimately, this is what you're going to end up with. It's going to look like this. You're going to click a button that says Next. You're going to click a button that says Previous. And that's all you have to do. So I downloaded this zipped file right here. And um, I put it on my desktop. So it's an InDesign document. So let me, why is everything hard to grab here right now? Oh, because I didn't open anything up. Sorry. Um, so I'm in Finder. And on my desktop here, I downloaded a folder called Calder <coughs> Folder. It's zipped up. You double click on it, and it opens. And it supplies you with a file called Calder right here. It also supplies you with a, fo a folder called Links. So when you open the Calder folder, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get a warning about a font being bad. And you can see the font is bad. It's pink. The way you change a font that's bad is you click on Find Font. You make the font active. And I'm going to click Helvetica. And I'm going to find bold. Um, let me just find bold here for the time being. Actually, let me see if there's a bold condensed. There might be here. Let's see. Condensed bold. And you have to click Change All to change your font. Click Change All. You get that yellow warning symbol goes away, and you're done. And notice the pink went away from those buttons. OK? <coughs> Then what you're looking at here, the reason the type is red is the type has been set up as outline, so you wouldn't be missing a font here. I actually thought Helvetica would have been loaded on this computer. So if I go, I'm in InDesign, and if I go to View in Preview, the type's no longer red. <coughs> the type's red because it's been converted to outline. So that's really what we're looking at here. Let me show you a couple other things here. Um, one of the things you're going to need to do in order to, uh, <coughs> our window is kind of small, huh? In order to um, change the links so we can see the links, um, the links always, you need to check that your links are properly linked. And if we go right here to window, window links, um, right here, I, do, I already updated them, unfortunately. Let me, let me go backwards because I want you to learn how to update links because I think some of you might not know how, and it's going to be a problem. So if I go to um, the work folder and I go to downloads, here's the Calder zip folder. If I double click on the Calder zip folder, I'm still in the downloads, and you'll see this is what you're going to find. And now if I double click on the Calder in design document, my font is missing. So I'm going to find the font. I'm going to select this. I'm going to type Helvetica. Um, and what I'm looking for is Helvetica New here, in this case. And I'm going to find Condense Bold. I'm going to change all, so now I have good fonts. And I'm done. Um, oh, it still didn't give me a hard time about links. That's interesting. OK, all my links are good. <coughs> If you don't, if your links aren't good, which they weren't when I first downloaded this for some reason, what you do is you go to Window and you go to Links. You open the link panel and you're going to see little red stop signs there. So what you do is you highlight just any one of those graphics, go to the link folder, locate um, the Calder folder, and in the Calder folder, pay attention, this is 01158. Find 01158, click Open, and what will happen is everything will automatically link because it will locate everything for you. All right? Having your links found and, um, is really important. So now we have all of our links set up. The other thing you need to make sure that you've set up for interactivity is always set up in InDesign your interactive workspace. It's the same thing with any workspace in Adobe. Go to the upper right corner. Find interactive, not for PDF, but interactive, and make that your workspace. And then very simply, we're going to do two things. The way this file has been set up for you is pretty straightforward. 
um, if I go to my selection tool, you'll see that I've built all these stacked photos for you. Let me just delete them. So one on top of the other, there's a bunch of stacked photos. They're all aligned to the left, and they're all sitting on top of each other, right? They're done for you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to create art or anything. So I'm just clicking and deleting these. They're just stacked. Okay, so if I go to, um, let me just hit undo to, instead of reverting it. So this is where we're at. So there's all these images stacked, and they're on the same layer. There's no magic to the layers or anything like that. They're on the same layer. They're stacked, and they're aligned to the left. And then there's this little square, which a shadow has been given to, and text has been put on it. And these are going to be used for buttons. They're just a text box with text in it right now. Everybody good on that? Yeah? All right. Um, so all you have to do is two things. We're going to take all these photos that are stacked, and we're going to marquee them and make them all active, because there, there's a bunch of them. And these photos are going to be called an object state. They're going to be called a multi-state object. And all you do for them is in your interactive window, and if you get lost, you can go to interactive <coughs> object state, like that. Or you can go to this little panel here, object state, to show the panel. Select all the photographs, and we want to turn them into a new state. I know this is a new word. I don't know why it's called a state, but it's what it is. We're going to make a new state. I'm big on naming everything properly. See, I have 15 photos stacked, and I'm going to change the name to Calder, because when you create your portfolio, you'll probably have lots of these. So I'm going to call this Calder, and I'm going to call it Multi-State, because I want to name everything really clearly for myself. And that's all I need to do. It, it now exists as a multi-state object. I'm done. I can close that. Then I'm going to go to this rectangle here that has text in it and a little shadow added to it. And I want to make this a button. And I want it to go to the next image in that multi-state selection of photographs. Okay? So I go to my button panel. I want to make this a button. So I go to this little thing that says convert my object, that square, to a button. And I'm going to name it because I don't want button one. I'm going to call it next, and I'm going to call it button so I know it's a button. Name everything really clearly. And this button is going to activate on release, so click and then release. I don't have to do anything. But then I have to give this button an action. What do I want this button to do? Well, I'm going to give it an action. I'm going to add a new action for the event. And I want this button to go to next, right? It's my next button. But I don't want it to go to a next page. I want it to go to a next state, because I made those group of photos a state. So I go to next state, and I only have one multi-state object, that colder one. So it goes to next, and I'm done. That's it. Now I click on this, and notice when it's a button in the little bottom right corner, it has a little finger, and it looks like a button. Right? All right. Now I go to my previous image button, which isn't a button yet. I turn it into a button, convert object to a button. I'm going to call it previous button because I want to name things super clear. I leave on release. That's fine with me. That's good enough for me. There's many choices on click, on rollover. Remember the little book that rolled over and changed? That's where you designate it. Okay. So I'm going to leave it on release because that's fine. I'm going to give it an action. What do I want it to do? Well, I want it to go to the previous state. It's my previous button. So I click that. I only have one object state, Calder. If I had many, I would choose which object state I would want it to act on. If I had many object states, they would show up in that window as a choice. But there's only one. So it's going to the Calder object state. See in my pull down menu, I only have one. And the only other thing I want you to notice is Stop at first state. Do I want it to stop or do I want it to keep going? I don't want to stop it. I want it to go forever. I want to just click forever and ever without a stop. 
Same thing here. If I go to, and notice um, right here on my button, it now looks like a button, and it's done. If I go to my next image, same thing. Do I want it to stop at the last state? No, I want it to keep going, so I'm not going to check that. And I'm done. Now, how do I know I did this properly? Well, in the bottom here, there's a little preview window, or I can go to Window Interactive Preview. Pull it up that way, same thing. Gives me a preview panel. I can click here, gives me a preview <coughs> panel. The preview panel is usually tucked right here. It's usually right there. And if I click the preview panel, you can size it. You can make it big or small, whatever you want. I can tear this off and I can make it super big right there. Pay attention to this. If you have a document that's many pages, you can preview only one page, which is what it's on now. This is only a one page document, so no problem. But if you want to preview a bunch of pages, don't forget to select preview the whole document, not just the one page. But since it's a one page document, no big deal. And so I'm going to click the play preview and everything's going to show up on my page. Hang on James. Everything's going to show up on my page and I can click next, 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 or previous, 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 right? Doesn't stop, it'll just keep going. That's all you need to do. It's all you're doing. You're making an object state and you're making buttons. The only other thing you have to do now is it won't work as an InDesign document. You have to save this document, save it as a, as a InDesign document now that we've set it up, so just save it. So I'm going to save it and call it interactive so I know I've done something to it. So I save my InDesign document, all my links are happy, my font is happy, everything's linked properly. And then how you save it for interactivity is you export it. So you go to File, Export. And then you have choices in your pull down menu of how you want to export it. How you're going to choose to export it is as a Swift file. It makes a flash file for you without you doing anything. So you're going to save it as a Swift file, an SWF file. Notice it changes the name of the document to SWF. You can put it in the same folder, Calder folder that you had. And you save it. And when you save it, it's going to give you a new dialog box, which I think you remember from the assignment display page. And the default is that page curl is active, like when you turn the pages of a magazine and they curl open. Um, turn it off. Turn off page curl. And then it's going to generate also for you an HTML file. So if you open the HTML file in Firefox or Safari or any browser, your page is going to play for you. So I'll show you. So I click Generate HTML. <coughs> and let's view the Swift yeah. after exporting so you can see it. And then I click OK. And it says it's CMYK. It's going to convert to RGB, no problem. It launched, it launched it right here for me in a browser, and I can view it. I can <laughs> click Next, and I can click Previous, and it's done. And then what you're going to do is if we go to um, it's the Downloads folder I need. Let's go to the Work folder. Oh, no, I saved on the desktop. Okay, so here's my Swift file. That's the file you're going to upload to Moodle, okay? the Swift file. Because John and I can look at that Swift file, we can drag that Swift file into Firefox right now. Right here. Come on. There we go. It's not letting me. All right. I can go to Firefox and I can go to open file and I can locate it. Here's the Swift file. I actually think I put it in here. There you go. And I can open it from my browser, from Firefox, and I can see it like that, right? So, are there any questions about this? Yes, James. Yeah, well, you said it was one page, but you meant it was one, uh, you set all the pages up as one uh, state, right? It is, it is a one-page document. Let's look at it. So, in InDesign, I'm in InDesign, 
Here's my window. Here's my pages in InDesign. I have a one-page document in InDesign. It is one page. In InDesign, I stacked all those photographs on top of each other. I took, I placed them one after the other. So, for example, so let me show you. So let's let's take the mystery out of this for a second. Let me close this. Let me make a new InDesign document. make it wide and let me go steal a bunch of images um, here we go I don't know about you guys but this is kind of where I arrived right all right so we're taking this cute little happy face here okay okay yeah now, since this is web it doesn't have to be uh, and this um, correct. That's a really excellent question. Yes, that's correct. Um, Teresa, these do not look like your cookies. Okay, here's enough for all of us. Where are the cookies? Yeah, I think. I thought that was part of the deal. I think isn't that our final project, right? Yeah, Teresa are. does baking for all us. Here, what about panda and rice? Now that's pretty cute. Come on, you guys, that's pretty cute. Okay, so let's do this. So now I've made. I hope these all loaded here. I can't quite tell if they did or not. Um, hopefully they did. Okay, so let's go back to our InDesign document. And let me do this. So, so you just place them one after another? So I can even do this. Um, so let me go to File. Let me go to Place. Let me locate the desktop. Um, let me locate Date Modified. Let me select these three images, okay? Um, that's all I got so far downloaded. And let me, I selected all three at the same time, and I'm going to open them, and I'm going to stack them right here. One, two, three. All right? And uh, let me put the big one on. Let me just shrink the big one. I can't remember. There we go. So they're all stacked on top of each other, right? <coughs> and I'm going to make this um, this button here is going to be um, red for back, backwards, and I'm going to duplicate it, and that's going to be forwards, okay? Now, I'm going to take all those three images I stacked, three, all the three, and um, actually, let me just do this. Let me just make a few things. Here's another one that's yellow or green. You say my, my, my art teacher's color. Um, okay, so now we just have more images, okay? So now I've got six, I think, stacked. So I'm going to select all of them. They're stacked on each other. And I'm going to go to Window, Interactive, Object State. And I'm going to make this, use my little pullout, make it a new state. And I'm going to call my new state um, Lunch, right? How do you know? Multi-state. <laughs> And then um, I have six images, right? You can see them here. And then I'm going to close that, and I'm going to make my red button a button and make it a new button. I'm going to call it back. That's my back button. And I'm going to give it an action, and it's going to go to the previous state. And the only state I have is lunch here. Oh, you know, I must not have saved my object state name. Let's see. It didn't save the name. Let me try that again. Lunch. Multi-state. There. Now it should have saved properly. Right? Yes. Okay. Now you just press so, I go to my, so I go to my button here, and I want my button to go to my previous state, the lunch multi-state. And now I go to, let me tear this off. I go to my blue button. I'm going to turn it to a button. I want it to go to my next lunch button, right? And I'm going to give it an action, and I want it to go to my next state. And I'm all done. Everything's been done. So I can click the little preview down here, or I can go to Window, Interactive Preview, same way to get there. 
And here's my graphic. Here's my whole page showing. I want to play it so it's active. And so I'm going to go to my next, next, next. Here's lunch. To get it to play, you have to go to the bottom left. Yeah, to get it to the bottom, you hit the little triangle. Okay? So not so mysterious, right? Not so mysterious once you follow it. Any other questions about this? So, so James, to answer your question again, it's only a one-page document at this <coughs> point. You might have, for example, you might have different pages for, in your portfolio, for example. You might have a new page for every project and different things to scroll through, but that's going to get complex. So you're going to start to think it through as you plan your pages. Are there any other questions about this? This is the exercise. So you can see the exercise will take no time to accomplish, right? Any other questions about this? Okay, and then again, for this, I would save it. Um, I will export it. I will save it. I will export it as a Swift file. I will turn off page curl. I'll generate an HTML document for it, and I will view it as a Swift afterwards. I can't, without the SWIFT, the HTML is meaningless. The HTML is only a container to display my SWIFT. Okay? And here it is. And I can click through it and go backwards. Is that a Bravo? Bravo? Right? Yeah? Okay.